compound group. It hasn't stopped. Wow. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. A very heartbreaking situation is going on in Palestine right now. Over a million people they are concentrated in a small area, and the Israelis are bombing them left, right, and center. And the rockets they are falling in that small area, and their buildings are bombed, and little children, women, elderly men, all of them, they are just being slaughtered. And uh, it's a very sad situation that the whole world has turned a blind eye and a deaf ear towards the whole situation, which is uh, very saddening and very, very heartbreaking. And uh, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise amongst us Umar bin Khattab anhu, someone like him or Salahuddin Ayyubi so that he can at least come and do justice. So we have to, you know, also look at the history that how the Muslims have always behaved after a battle, right? So it all starts from the period, you know, if you go back to the period of Salahuddin Ayyubi Rahmatullah, you know, how he conquered Jerusalem in Battle of Hatin in 1187. And uh, when, he, when he conquered it, he gave Balian, you know, a clean exit. And he was amazed and shocked when Salahuddin Ayyub, Ayyubi told him that you can exit, a safe exit with your family, children, and old members. You can go and leave the city. When he was so amazed because only 88 years before that, the Crusaders, how they conquered Jerusalem. And after conquering Jerusalem, how they entered and slaughtered everyone, men, women, children, and those who sought refuge in, uh, in the mosque, Al-Aqsa and the surrounding areas, the soldiers went inside and just slaughtered them, around 10,000 people in the mosque they slaughtered and the blood was up to their ankles. And plus, I mean, they also slaughtered Jews as well. Jews should also know that, that the Crusaders, they slaughtered Jews and some other sects of Christians as well, along with Muslims, around us, like 70,000 people were slaughtered. And the eyewitnesses and the historians write that the blood came up to the ankles of the horses and the soldiers, you know, how, a bloody blood, blood bath it was, you know. So Muslims have never ever done something like this, this heinous crime, you know, these atrocities, ruthlessness. You, you, have, you, have, you have the example of Salahuddin Ayyubi, you know, how he behaved after conquering Jerusalem. He never killed anyone like that. He never took revenge. He could have taken revenge by saying that, look what you have done to us 88 years ago, I'm going to slaughter everyone. You know. But the historians, even the Western historians, they testified how nice and kind he was when Jerusalem was conquered. And then when you come here in the World War, how the Jews were prosecuted, how Hitler was killing them, and no one gave shelter to them. No one gave shelter to them. And it was the Muslims only of Palestine, you know, how they welcomed them with their open arms and gave them their country, Palestine, that you can come please and live with us, only to know what they're going to do after some time. Now the, now, the, now the Israelis are bombing them. I mean, at least, you know, one should learn from history that how the Muslims have behaved after battles, right? And how the non-Muslims behave after battles, right? And how ungrateful that I give my home to a homeless person. That yes, please, you're a homeless person. Come in and live with me. And then the homeless person turns around and he kicks me out of my house 
and puts a gun on my head and says, I'll blow your brains out if you're not going to leave this house. Get out of here. So what would be my reaction? You tell me what would be my reaction. Of course, I'll go out and I'll be screaming. I'll be pelting rocks on my own house, you know, because I have been evicted. I have been, you know, kicked out of my own house. And when I do that, the whole world turns a blind, blind eye and a deaf ear, saying that you have no right to defense. And, and the Israelis have the right to defense. They have all the weapons, they have all the rockets and everything, you know. And these guys, they have got nothing, you know. Unarmed, little boys, children are being pulled out of rubbles, you know. Thank God, at least the Western, you know, people, not the media, not the governments, the people recognize this. And I've seen so many tweets and I've seen so many uh, celebrities as well, you know, talking against these atrocities. I've heard Pink Floyd, Roger Waters, you know, talked about it. I've also t uh, seen um, Bella Hadid as well. She's also uh, supported the Palestinians and most of footballers as well, you know. So this is so wrong, what is going on, you know. Uh, the United Nations and the whole world should at least, you know, look into it and stop these atrocities. This is so wrong. You know, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send someone to help these guys because all the Muslim um, uh, leaders have also uh, kind of, they're turning their blind eye towards, you know, the whole atrocities except, you know, Pakistan and Turkey. And uh, uh, they are also, you know, kind of supporting it verbally. No one's helping them, no one's, you know, coming into action so that at least, you know, they can stop these atrocities. Otherwise, they will keep on bombing, keep on bombing, you know, until they kill all the Muslims in Jerusalem. And which is, you know, it be so wrong. The whole world is looking at Israel and the whole world knows that the Palestinians, they gave Israelis, they gave these Jews, you know, a shelter. They gave them, they welcomed them heartwarmingly, you know, and then only to see that they turn around and bite them, you know. So this is so wrong. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all and guide us all. But the thing is that I uh, have another analysis that my question is how and why Palestine reached this stage of destruction? What caused it? So this little story that came to my mind from uh, retired Justice Mufti Taki Usmani Saab, he went to Iraq once and uh, since uh, we know that he has a huge madrasa in, in Karachi, Darulum Karachi, very uh, beautiful, huge madrasa. And uh, so he went there and said he wished, he wanted to see uh, madrasas in Iraq. So he asked someone, are, are there any madrasas in Iraq? Uh, the people said there are no madrasas here, only schools and colleges. So he was amazed, you know. And, uh, and he said, okay, fine. Are there any, uh, uh, any religious scholars any teachers who used to teach in the madrasas, I want to see them, you know, I want to meet them. So they said that no, they're, they're, there's none, except one teacher who, is, who lives near the shrine of Abdul Qadir Jalani Rahmatullah. So he said, okay, take me to him. So he said, I went there and I, 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 when I saw the religious uh, Iraqi scholar, I saw uh, his glowing face with the beard and all that, and he was so beautiful. And uh, Taki Usmani Saab, he introduced him himself to him and said that I am from Pakistan and I have this uh, madrasa. And he was so excited, the Iraqi scholar. And he was so excited and he started asking, which books do you read? Which books do you teach in the madrasa, you know, in, in excitement? And he said, uh, we teach Quduri and we teach Nurul Anwar, Muhtasar Mani, you know, Bukhari and Muslim Sharif and all these books. And he was so excited and he said that he screamed out of joy and he cried out. And he sobbed and he cried that, Wallahi, we used to teach these books in madrasas in Iraq as well. 
but then now there are no madrasas. Everything is converted to schools and colleges, probably because, uh, because of the people, the secular-minded people, the modern Muslims who are against the madrasas, who are against the religious scholars, thinking that they are jahils, you know. So because of the pressure on the government and the government itself, you know, then they turned all these madrasas, madrasas into, into schools and colleges. And Mufti Taki Usmani Sahib, this is the thing that I want to tell you, that when Mufti Taki Usmani Sahib came back to Pakistan, right after six months, right after six months, Iraq was bombed and burned down to ashes. See, this is what I want to tell you, that when you remove the schools of Allah and religious scholars, from your country, Allah does not need you. Allah says that I will replace you with something else. So what I was thinking that, that Iraq, Palestine, uh, Libya, Kashmir, they all have one thing in common, which is they don't have madrasas. They don't have religious scholars, teachers of religion. They don't have these scholars. That is why I personally think that maybe when you, when you chuck Allah and his schools and his books and his religion out of the country, then Allah says, I don't need you. I don't need you. So he'll replace you. He put someone else like he has done in the history in the past, if you see how the nation after nation, he changed when they rebelled against him. So right now, I personally think that the whole world is eyeing on Pakistan and they're trying to break it. They are trying to break it with all their power, I'm telling you. All the countries, Pakistan is like a thorn, you know. They want to destroy it, they want to divide it, break it, but they are unable to do it. The reason? Because Pakistan has got madrasas. Afghanistan has got madrasas. They are the fortresses of Allah. They have got religious scholars. Bangladesh have got madrasas. Also, India has got madrasas. This is the region where the madrasas are. But the pity is the strange thing is, I come across a lot of modern Muslims and secular Muslims um, people. Uh, they are always, they always talk against madrasas. They always talk against mosques. They always talk against religious scholars. I'm telling you that you should know who your well-wisher are. Seriously, these guys are giving their services to you for free. No one does that. They are not being paid to talk these things, right? Why would somebody say something that would hurt your feelings for free, you know? Why would someone want people to turn against them? And they are not being paid for that. You need to understand that what they say is written in Quran and Sunnah. You don't like it because it does not align with your desires. It does not align with your wishes and your wants, what you want to do, you know. They are doing Amar Bil Maruf, Nahi Anil Munkar, which is means stopping you from wrong things. So when somebody stops you from wrong things, you turn against them. This is the nature of a man. But you have to understand that when a doctor puts a needle in you, he is your friend. He might be giving you pain, but he is your friend. At the end, he saves your life. If he cuts you open, he's saving you. He's a doctor. You cannot turn around against him and be his enemy. A doctor is always your friend. Similarly, an Islamic religious scholar is your friend. He is doing the duty of your parents 
what your parents were supposed to teach you about Islam, about religion, they did not because they got stuck in this world. They have got the pressure of the society and now their love for you, their well-wishing for you is only limited to this world. They don't care where you're going to go after you, you die. Their relationship with you is only limited to this world. But a religious scholar's relationship with you is unlimited. It carries on even after death. He wants, he makes sure, he wants you, us to go to Jannah as well. So who is your well-wisher? The Malvi, the religious scholar, is actually doing the job of your parents, what they were supposed to teach you, they did not teach you. Now they have taken that responsibility and they are teaching you. They are teaching us. So you need to, you need to understand, you need to know your, your well-wishers. Apne khair khwa ko pehchanne ki koshish kare. They are seriously your well-wishers. I have studied in schools and colleges. I've studied in England. I've studied in National College of Arts, Lahore. And I've studied in London. I did my animation. And then I came and studied in Madrasa as well. They are all bunch of lies who say that these are the factories of terrorism, all bunch of lies, eight years, I studied in a madrasa. You cannot fool an alim into terrorism because alim always argues from Quran and Sunnah. You cannot fool him and give him a gun and go and start killing innocent people like that. No way, because alim always seeks for a proof from Quran. This is what he he is being uh, taught all eight years that whenever somebody tells you to do something, seek what is in Quran, what is in Hadith. And that is completely against terrorism, right? So I tell the West that if you want to stop this terrorism, tell people to go to madrasas. Seriously, I'm not joking. Because an alim, you cannot fool an alim by giving him a gun and tell him to go and kill that Christian or kill that Jew. He will never ever do that because our Prophet never ever did that except, you know, in a battlefield. That is the rule in the whole world. But an unarmed man, whether it be a non-Muslim, whether it be Jew, Christian, they were guidelines. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that you should not chop trees. You should not kill children. You should not kill old people. You should not kill a man without armed, an unarmed man. Only you fight those who fight you, right? These were the guidelines. So you cannot fool a religious scholar who has studied from a madrasa. You cannot fool me. I have studied eight years in madrasa and you cannot come and give me or brainwash me and give me a gun and say that go and kill that Jew. I'll never do that because I have not read that in any of my books in madrasa. Do you understand that? I've never ever studied that kind of thing in a madrasa. So, so all these things are bunch of lies. All lies. Right? So my dear brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that you should know your well-wisher, who your well-wisher is. And I also tell the West that if you want to stop this terrorism, tell people to go to the madrasas. Because in madrasas, a man actually learns the life of Prophet Muhammad and Quran as well, which is not against humanity which is against killing humanity. The Quran in Surah Maida clearly says, if someone kills a man, it's, look, it, it's as if he has killed the whole of the humanity. If someone saves a life, 
It's like it's say, it's, it has saved the whole of the humanity. These are against the teachings of Islam, what Jews are doing right now, what the Israelis are doing right now, and what the Crusaders are doing uh, did at that time. It, is, it was also against the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, right? So it was all uh, their own decisions out of anger, out of revenge. They did that, but Islam stops us from taking revenge, right? Even in battlefields, you know, if somebody dropped his weapon, they did not kill. They left him because he dropped his weapon. So that's what I'm saying, my dear brothers and sisters. We should, uh, we should, you know, think about it that these madrasas are actually the fortresses of the country and the religious scholars are your well-wishers. And if you remove them, thinking that you will have a beautiful life, thinking that you will have a peaceful life, I'm telling you, Allah will remove us. Allah will send someone to bomb us as well. Pakistan, I think, is on the hit list, right? But Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved it because we have got all the religious scholars with us praying. We have got all the madrasas, you know, which, is, which are the schools of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by all means, they are just peaceful schools. They are not terrorist factories like the Western propaganda is, you know. And I also tell the Western media, Western people as well, that <laughs> if you want to stop this terrorism, that you should tell people to go to madrasa. Seriously, I've studied there in eight years. I've not come across a single book that says, that justifies that you can kill uh, or bomb, you know, an innocent person, whether it be a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Right? And you should also look at the history and see how Muslims have always behaved. You telling Muslims that they are warlords and they are this and they are that, right? But you have to understand how Muslims behaved in battles and how the Crusaders behaved, right? How uh, um, um, Salahuddin Ayyubi Rahmatullah behaved and how the Crusaders behaved how the Israelis are behaving right now and how the Muslims behaved, right? So it's, it's, a, it's very clear. It's very clear. And I pray, and I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the Israelis as well, you know, for these atrocities, what they are doing is so wrong for a piece of land, you know. Before uh, the Crusaders, I tell you in Jerusalem, when it was Muslims, you know, reigning that area, Christians were living there, Jews were living there peacefully. They never ever killed a Jew, they never ever killed a Christian. But when Crusaders came, came everything changed. They killed everyone. They killed Muslims, they killed uh, Christians, and they killed Jews as well, you know. But then Salahuddin Ayyubi came, everything normalized, right? And then again, you know, Israelis have come in here and they want to kill everyone and they want to take their lands. They want to kill children. They want to kill women. They want to kill elderly. They want to kick everyone out of their homes. So ungrateful, so unjust. Just think, just think that this is this what you do is this what you do to someone who has helped you when nobody was giving you shelter? So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah help Palestinians, Allah help Kashmir and all the Muslims in the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.